mysteries that lie betwixt the cairns and creeks, over the mountains of mist and glens of yore, what hides in plain sight and within our country's lore? Welcome to the dark and sardonic world of Scottish folklore. Scotland, Caledonia, Alba, a country near five and a half million of us are proud to call home, a country full of rich history, innovation and mythology that reaches the furthest corners of the world, dark brooding spirits, conniving imps and horrifying creatures are few of the supposed beings that hide in the crevices of Scotland's mythological history. Tales told in these past fables can mirror feelings of the modern day world. Despite how far we've advanced in the past centuries, we still find various stories and whispered conjurations that ring through to this very day. I bring you the tale of the Cunyak. The Cunyak, also known as the Weeper Woman of the Prairies, Spirit of the Woods, Locks and Creeks, is a Celtic water spirit found throughout various places within Scottish folklore. She is often confused with the malevolent Ben Nye in Irish mythology, most commonly known as the Banshee. The Cunyak is of a different degree, a spirit of tumultuous intent who weeps her sorrowful dirge and cries out into the night. Those that hear the cries may heed its warning and flee the scene of battle. Those who ignore her pleas suffer the cruel hand of death as they are doomed to be slain at the battlefield. The Cunyak is but a signal of death a warning pleading those who hear her cries that death is certain should they continue on their chosen path. The Cunyak cannot be approached, but has been characterised by a white robe and hag-like demeanour. It is said the Cunyak of Clan Macdonald was heard weeping her sorrowful cries the days before the dreaded morning of the 13th of February in 1692, the massacre of Glencoe. It was this dark, fateful day around 38 members of the Macdonald clan butchered and slaughtered as he slept in the early hours by Clan Campbell. If only the clan heeded the warning of the Cunyak's supposed cries, they may have survived. Major Duncanson, an enemy of the Macdonalds, wrote to Captain Robert Campbell, By order of the King, at five o'clock the next morning, every member of Clan Macdonald under 70 must be put to the sword, and on no account must the old fox and his sons escape the slaughter. Captain Robert Campbell was to attack the clan the next morning. The night prior, Robert Campbell was feasting with Alistair MacLean, clan chief of Macdonald. His men slept, feasted, and played amongst the Macdonalds. All was calm, but alas, the nefarious plot took place. At 5 a.m., Campbell had slain McLean in his bed. The bloodied massacre ran through as crofts were set alight. Screaming and bloodshed ensued as the McDonald's were slaughtered. Many died from exposure and injuries totalling around 40 to 300 unaccounted for clan members. Many managed to flee, however. The weeps of the Cunyak rang true. Through the chaos and turmoil, the blood of Clan Macdonald spilled on the soil. Come nightfall, the clan wept as they ventured down from the hills in safety to the site of the massacre to bury their dead. 
From the crying of the widows that hold her dead, it brought an uncanny resemblance to the weeping of the Cunha. Her dirge, as collected by Scottish folklorist Alexander Carmichael, was heard thundering across the bloodied settlement. Little Cunyak of the Sorrow is pouring the tears of her eyes. Weeping and wailing the fate of Clan Donald. Alas, my grief that ye did not heed her cries. There is gloom and grief in the Mount of Mist. There is weeping and calling in the Mount of Mist. There is death and danger. There is maul and murder. There is blood spilling. There, there is blood spilling. There is blood spilling in the Mount of Mist. The cries of widows tear through the valley and hearts of all living beings. Identic to the weeps of the Cunyak and are pleased to end the bloodshed. This disputed creature of folklore may be of mythical and fanatical origins. However, the sentiment and tale behind her grieving woes is sadly a timeless pain that seeps through the bloodied heart of every man, woman and child who have lost loved ones in armed conflict. The Cunyak weeps at the presence and thought of war. Her anti-war sentiment hidden behind her ghostly cries is rooted in all of humanity. Her cries echoed in the hearts of widows, yet largely as a whole, we choose to not hear them. Facts and myth rarely align, but the essence of the Cunyak will forever spread through time. Thank you.